Good morning, Judith. Oh, good morning, Tina. And how are you on this lovely Wellington day? Are you here or are you up in Auckland? I'm in Auckland. I'm in Auckland today. Cool. I was in Dunedin yesterday, Auckland today, Wellington next week. I can, I'm just so imagine I'm you've still today. got a very busy schedule. I certainly have. Well, I'm involved in the tech and science areas, and that means I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and such a positive area, too. I, I, the, yeah. I, and we've just been talking, as you've probably gathered, about gene editing. Um, and we seem yeah. to have had a, a, a shift in the uh, last uh, 48 hours, actually. Yeah, uh, where we've yeah. had the the proposal from the government come out saying, oh, we might need some gene te- editing technology here. Yeah. Um, and mm. then we had Lou Sanson on yesterday's going, hey, if we had gene te- editing technology, guess what? Um, we could make some major gains in bio- biodiversity and um, actually it would probably negate the need for much else. And then, of course, we had James Shaw, which I think is the most pivotal statement that came out on Farmers Weekly last night, which is, Oh, yep, we definitely have to have conversations around gene editing. So where's National's position on it? Well, interestingly, I approached uh, Dr. Al Shaviral, who is my equivalent in the research science innovation area, uh, in August. I had a meeting with her and said, we need to have a consensus approach around gene editing, an intelligent conversation that is not, you know, that takes into account the fact that science has moved on for the last 20 years and that we have no other solution when it comes to things like methane levels and other greenhouse gases uh, other than to look at the actual the food that that animals uh, eat but also and what else can be done and we have such great scientists and we're losing them unless we do exactly what every other developed country is doing and that is to look at the science, use the science, and make it work for us. Yeah, because I was really interested to talk to Richard Scott from Ag Research, um, where basically we're doing the science, but offshore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how silly well, is that? <laughs> well, it, it, it's insane, isn't it? And I, I talked to all the CRIs, which is you know, Ag Research is one of them, Crown Research Institutes. They have the people and the knowledge they can do things now using uh, laboratories. They can have changes made in terms of genes by a natural process using greenhouses and, and that sort of thing, but it can take years for that. While in the laboratory, they have the ability to tweak a gene uh, and to get the same outcome that would otherwise take years and years. And actually what's been holding them back has been a conviction around a 20-year-old um, story which needed to actually move on because the science has moved on. It's an entirely different situation than what it was in 2022. Oh, sorry, 2022. So in terms... I mean, it's 2022, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm moving ahead of myself. It's just an entirely different situation. <laughs> You'll still be around <laughs> those days. <laughs> oh, well, no doubt I will be. Um, well, you know, they do say you can't kill weeds. Um, but I think it is really important. And, you know, our farmers have been told basically by this government that a fifth of all of the dairy and sheep farmers will be gone. Yeah, uh, it's like that. It's like a no, given. You know, that's the thing I really f- struggle with yeah. this. It's just well, like they just go, go. oh, actually, yeah, we're going to lose a lot of farmers out of this um, and it'll be a big land change. And, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, who, seriously? So they can, so they can, uh, look, we've already lost tourism to a large extent. We have, it, and I, I'm involved with that, Judith, and quite frankly, that yeah. is seriously scary. Well, it is very scary, and our only way through, really, Tina, is through technology and science. And we have such an advantage because we have a history of research and science, particularly in agricultural and health areas. And... And instead of forcing our, um, our CRIs to send their research to Australia, yeah. uh, then uh, why don't we do it here? Yeah. Uh, it is insanity, and that is the trouble when you have a government that is all about ideology and fashion shoots and not actually about feeding people and putting uh, money into people's pockets. So we've got, for instance, 40 million people who we feed as a country. 40 million. If we stop or or come back from where we already are... And we, don't we have some sort of tr- uh, trade um, 
uh, thing around food food security that we've signed up to? Isn't there an accord well, we that have, we've signed up to? Well, the Paris Accord that this government is talking about and which National signed us up to already had a, an exemption around food production because nobody else would think it's smart to cut food production from one of the most incredibly um, stable countries in terms of our food production, our most efficient farmers in the world, so that instead food production could go offshore to countries that are less efficient, less environmentally sound, and where it's only going to benefit them. Just imagine that if this government gets to stay in power next year, just imagine what it's going to do, the cost of living and the cost of food. It's already rocketed through the roof. Yeah. What do people think is going to happen when there's a fifth of our farmers have been told to leave, basically? Yeah, that is crazy, isn't it? Uh, uh, that is just absolutely crazy. So what is National's response? What if, if it was National yesterday rolling out what it was going to do around climate change and the primary sector, what would that look like? Well, for a start, National accepts that there is climate change and that you know, obviously we can have an effect on that. But we're also very aware that our solutions have to be around technology and science, as well as giving, for instance, farmers credit for all of the riparian strips that they have been oh, planting. That was just uh, madness. The, that wasn't that insane. It's just, an, it's, it's uh, an, yeah, it is insane. And it's like, that's the word I've been using too, Judith. Quite frankly, a tree on one side of the fence is the same as a tree on another side. Sorry, if well, it's going to sequester exactly. carbon, it doesn't matter where the bloody thing is. Well, actually, what I found out from visiting Land uh, Care, which is another Crown Research Institute, is that shelter belts are incredibly efficient yes. at sucking up carbon, more so than plantations, and it's all to do with the space around them, the way that the tree can grow freely and isn't confined in a, in a big um, forest. And, and none of that, they're not allowed to get any credit for this. So, in fact, what Labor has done is that they have broken the accord that they had. So they worked with Federated Farmers and the other uh, representatives of farmers. They, we had a bipartisan approach around climate change with National. Um, but what they've done now is they've gone out on their own. They've actually broken that accord. They did not consult National. They did not consult the farmers. They just said, here it is, take it or leave it. Well, my answer is leave it and have an intelligent response using technology, science and giving credit to our farmers for the excellent work they're already doing around things like shelter belt, things around the uh, better use of land. Yes, but it's not all. The answer is not just pine trees everywhere. No. It's actually about understanding you can't eat them. And the other thing is we don't really sort of, oh, maybe I'm missing something here, but, but, but where is the stuff around what the people in the cities are doing? Uh, where, where is the imposition on, on them? Well, Tina, I think actually people in the cities are doing it pretty tough because the cost of living. Well, that's and fair. That is fair. And hospitality's uh, taken a hit because uh, of tourism yeah, and it, uh, just generally. I, and and I, think, I think Labor and the Greens um, have run down this line of turning urban people against farmers and farmers against urban people. I'm not going to have a bar of it because, you know, when I go to the supermarket and I order butchers and, and get the food, I see prices going up every day and these people, they've got no options. They can't grow their meat. They can't do anything else. They're at the receiving end. And there's an, and when you've got a government saying a fifth of our farmers is going to, are going to be gone in a few years, well, that's going to make the cost of meat the cost of food produced here go up, not I don't down. think you can discount, though, that there isn't a general disquiet in the rural areas about the fe them, them feeling like they're doing all the work for everybody else. And we, we've just yep. got another policy statement that's coming out of Greater Wellington, which is going to hit the Wairarapa, and no doubt other regional councils are doing something similar. And, and, and it basically turns... It, it, it takes all of this sort of stuff another level and, and is turning in the Wairarapa into the carbon sink for Wellington. You know, yeah, so, and, and, and so we're, we're got I, I like, nah... That. <laughs> well, Tina, you're dead right. And what you've got, and you know that Wellington's um, a bit odd. 
uh, it's it older than I've politics. ever seen it. I have never seen yep. so little. Uh, that, uh, I have some problems around productivity. Uh, I, yeah. uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an old journalist. I'm used to picking up the phone and having a yarn to somebody in a government department to see if I can ever talk to them or an interview. My God, I, I, you've got to email them and then they put you in a queue and you probably don't talk to a person before you even actually get a, any sort of response from them. So there well, is I no would... interface anymore with real people. Is there any truth in that story that the new mayor of Wellington's first job was to get the decorators into the new office? I hope not. I really oh, hope, I hope not. not. Because <laughs> that's the sort of mentality that as a ratepayer in Wellington as I am as well, I would be, I'm pretty furious about that if that's true. What I would like to know is that um, people understand where our income comes from as a country. Yes. Where do they think it comes from? So when we were in government, we had two major areas, obviously. There were others like foreign students, which, oh, by the way, we don't have them now either. Um, we had all sorts of, you know, work about tourism, and we also had it around um, our primary pro products. Well, tourism has been completely knocked for six, yes. and it has not come back uh, to the level that we would all like. No, we've got and all these people waiting for bloody visas time. now, and they can't get That's them. Right. That's right. And then, and then we have, of course, um, the primary producers. So what's the government done? after you know, see, basically completely doing over the tourism industry, what well, now they want to do over the, the other area where we actually have income. So, you know, the answer is in science and technology, but these guys just don't, uh, they, they tell you to trust the science. So I'd like to see them actually do it now for something that's going to earn some income for our country and to stop picking on the farmers and help them with solutions. Totally agree. So, Judith, just in terms of you said you've had some conversations with Aisha Verrill, um, yes. and 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 do you think we can get to a consensus on this gene editing thing? Well, I jolly well hope so, because I, I, I mean, the previous minister Megan Woods wasn't well, she wasn't up for a question for a, for a meeting, but Aisha Verrill has been, and right. I've said to her, we, and are you going to go and have a yarn to James as well? Well, poor James. I mean, he's, he's, his problem is he's got an anti-science um, party. But he hasn't he? But on this. Look, he's he the one who's now stuff. saying now, now the well, time is right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it should have been 15 years ago, if we could have, um, <laughs> if they hadn't been against it. But we need to have a consensus on this because you can't have the scientists and the farmers having the rules changed every five minutes no. on them. We've got to have people knowing that this is a, a serious country, a serious uh, situation where people are taking it seriously and not using it for either a photo op or just to slam each other. So my view is if we can work together, that is the best solution and have those intelligent conversations, not just silly ones, uh, basically that are cartoonish uh, could put together. I totally agree. And look, thanks very much for your time this morning, Judith. Um, where are you off to Thank for the rest Tina. of the day? Well, I've got some other meetings in, in Auckland today and then, um, yeah, I've, just, I've got a tech summit coming up on the 11th of November. Um, so I'm very busy helping prepare for that. So there's uh, my staff member and me and um, a couple of other helpers are helping it put us together. So it's all about solutions and that's the great thing. It the is. Solutions are there. We've just got to ask for them. Yeah, it's good to have such a positive portfolio. Look, thanks very much for your time this morning, Judith. And uh, you go and bloody knock on that door um, at J James Shaw and tell him that uh, yeah. uh, he said it yeah. now. Uh, so you're ready and Aisha's ready, ready and we're yep. ready to go. So let's get this over the line. Yep. Okay, cool. Thanks, Tina. Morning. Bye. I'm Tina Nixon standing in for Michael Laws. That was a pretty interesting discussion. Looks like we might be heading towards some consensus across the political space on gene editing. Who would have thought? Certainly didn't think that one was coming earlier this week.